Hi, and welcome to Oracle Database World AI Edition. My name is Gerald Fensel, and today I will be showing how you can enable your apps to leverage AI to provide smart business answers. Now, before we jump right in, let's take a quick look at what AI actually means. While artificial intelligence is the automation of intelligent behavior through machine learning to enable machines to perceive their environment and take actions that maximize their chances of achieving defined goals with the aim of performing tasks typically associated with human intelligence. Often what you hear these days is vectors and vector databases. Now, how do we actually get to vectors? How do we generate vectors? Well, you will keep hearing about embedding models. An embedding model is a type of machine learning model used to encode data as vectors. Using these embedding models, vectors can then be compared for similarity. And hence, you can encode real-world entities such as an apple or banana or an apple in an airplane and compare how far apart they are. And again, the closer they are or the closer the distance of those, the more similar those real-world entities are. Now, different embedding models generate different vectors. First and foremost, there is a lot of different embedding models that you can use, but you would use a different model for embedding picture information or text information or video information. And then for each of these, again, there's many different models that you can use. The important thing here is that different models generate different vectors and those different vectors cannot be compared with each other. The only thing you can compare is vectors that are generated by the same model. So what is a vector? Well, mathematically speaking, a vector is a point in multidimensional space. So if you have a two-dimensional vector, it will point to these two dimensions, an X and a Y axis. Vectors are used in AI to encode the semantics of unstructured entities, such as images, documents, videos, etc., and to then represent these in these dimensions. This is known as vector embedding. The most important operation on vectors is to determine how far apart they are in terms of distance. So you can have two vectors and you can compare how far apart they are and calculate this distance. Now there are many different distance formulas that you can use, but that is essentially what brings you the vector similarity search that we will talk in just a little bit. Vectors can have many dimensions. For example, a 2D vector has two dimensions because it's two-dimensional, a length and a width. A 3D vector has three dimensions. A vector can have numerous dimensions. It entirely depends on what entity a vector represents, hence how many dimensions the vector needs to represent this. Now, software can treat these vectors like arrays of numbers. And you see here on the slide already, they look a little bit like arrays. And the length of the array or the size of the array defines the different dimensions of the vector. However, regular arrays are just a list of common elements. For example, a list of phone numbers. So you can have an array of five phone numbers and each phone number in there is meaningful in its own right. For a vector, however, the elements of a vector, what is called dimensions, represent unique attributes of the object. Like one dimension can represent the color of the object, another dimension the size of the object, another its shape. But you need the combination of all attributes to represent the overall object. So hence they're very different than arrays, although they look like arrays. For a vector, you will always need all dimensions. Now, let's take a look of how we can leverage vectors to find similarities of real world objects. Let's say, for example, we want to vectorize a picture of a house and we want to see whether there's other houses that look similar, so that have similar structure of the house, etc. In this picture here, what we would have to do is we feed this through a picture embedding model that is capable of determining those different characteristics of the house in the picture, and that will generate a 1024 dimensional vector. So this could be any dimensions, it's completely dependent on the embedding model. But if we take another picture of another house and feed it through the same embedding model, we will get another, in this case, 1024 dimensional vector. Now we have two vectors resembling those two pictures or those two entities. And now we can compare these vectors for the similarity. But how does the similarity search actually work? Well, 
Vectors generated by the same model can be compared based on the distance between them, as we said before. And the shorter the distance, the more similar the data from which the vectors were generated. So what does this look like in theory? Let's say you have these two pictures of those two houses and we want to compare the third house here with those two pictures. Which houses look more like each other? Well, our human eye will tell us that the bottom two pictures are more similar than the first one. But how will the machine know? Well, we will send all three pictures through the embedding model, generating three vectors that we can now compare for similarity and essentially compare the different dimensions of these vectors for how close to each other they are. Now, this is a very simplistic high-level view of what's happening behind the scenes and what's happening is very different. But let's just take a quick example at the first two dimensions and what this could look like theoretically. So we take those three vectors representing those three houses and we look at the first two dimensions. So we put an x and a y axis here and now we put these vectors on that x and y axis. So we give the vectors a name a, b, c and then we know that vector a will go somewhere above 200 and 0 0.2 on the y axis putting it there on the spot. And then we will do the same thing for B and C. And so now we can already again see with our human eye that B and C are closer to each other. And this is where vector distance calculation comes in. You can use one of these distance formulas to calculate the distance between C and B and the distance between B and A. And it's essentially that distance number that we can leverage later in our applications to compare for how similar given entities are. So that brings us now to vector databases. What is a vector database? Well, it's a database that can store, index, and run similarity search queries on high dimensional vectors. Essentially a database that allows us to store them and then compare them with each other. Now, there are many single purpose databases out there and add-ons to existing databases that you have probably already come across. But before we go there, Let's take a quick look at a practical example of how we may use vectorization and similarity search in applications. So let's say we have here an example of a mobile app that we use to buy houses. The user can essentially upload a picture of a house style he or she likes and then the app will find houses that look similar. Now we know already how we can embed pictures into a vector and then do similarity search. So one approach would be the app takes a picture that the user provides, runs it through a picture embedding model, and then does a similarity search on that picture to find other houses that look similar. And of course, the application would find houses, for example, in the Bay Area. But because we are only comparing the likelihood of the house, we will find houses all over the country that also look similar, which is probably not what the user wants because the user wants to buy a new house and probably has other parameters or data points of where this house should be and how much he can afford. So buying a house requires these additional data points, which are usually referred to as business data. So how would that look like? Well, if we want to make sure that we only find a house that is in the Bay Area and that the user can afford, we need a couple of different items. We need, of course, the house and what it should look like. So we saw this already is the vector from the picture that the user takes. But then we need the location data. Where should that house be? And that could be, for example, location data from the current address. The user doesn't want to move across the country. And last but not least, how much can the user afford or is willing to afford? What's the budget? And that could be information from bank account or financial information from the user. And only if you combine these three elements will you find a house that is actually satisfactory to the user. So you can see here that the combination of business data and vector data is crucial to actually produce meaningful results for the user. Now, how do we bring business data and vector data together so that we can find the answer we are looking for? Well, Single-purpose vector databases take a snapshot of your business data, vectorize that, and then do similarity search on the business data and other vector data. And it is up to you to keep the business data in sync in this vector database. Now, why is that important? Well, because your business data, of course, can change. For example, your budget may go up or down. 
you want to send that new information to your vector database so that it can give accurate answers. So you end up continuously sending snapshots of your business data to a vector database to keep it in sync with your business data. Furthermore, the business data that is relevant to the question that the user asks can vary widely. So for example, if the user wants to now ask, well, where should I go on vacation? You may need an entire different set of business data to answer that question. Your budget for house buying is no longer applicable, but maybe you want to find something else where, for example, the user can go on vacation where there's a special deal going on. And again, it's because you cannot predict these questions from a user. You essentially end up sending lots or all business data to your vector database so that you can answer pretty much all questions that could possibly be asked by a human being. Now, here's another important aspect. Single-purpose vector databases are not good at searching business data, nor are they good at securing business data. You essentially send a lot of potentially sensitive information to your vector database that then vectorizes that data and now is exposed as vectors in the database. But whether it's still secured or whether you can easily search on just these business questions that only require the business data, no, you cannot because that information is now there as vectors. Now, we believe it's a better solution to add vector search to your business data rather than sending your business data to your vector database. Not only enables you that to use business data and vector data when answering questions, but it also removes the need for moving or synchronizing this business data with your vector database or keeping multiple copies, securing it, and so forth. Let's look at an example of what this looks like. So starting with Oracle Database 23 AI, you can create columns of type vector. And you can, for example, here, add a new vector column to your houses for sales table. Now we can use the vector distance function to compare these stored vectors with an input vector. So if the user comes and says, please find me the top 10 houses similar to this picture, that picture can be vectorized via an embedding, and then we calculate the distance to all the other vectors that we have in the table. And because we have seen that the distance is a number representing the distance of those vectors, we can order by that, and that just fetch the first 10 rows, knowing that the first 10 results are the ones that are the most similar. Now, the important aspect here is there's no machine learning expertise required. Every developer out there can leverage vector AI search within minutes because it's just exposed via a simple SQL command or function. Furthermore, we can combine that with business data with additional where clauses, such as the customer's budget and preferred city. Those are now just additional where conditions in the same select statement. And this statement now combines customer data, product data, and AI search in five lines of SQL with all data being fully consistent. This is huge, and this is how you can leverage AI vector search on your applications to provide smarter outputs or smarter answers to your users. Now, we have also heard a lot about generative AI in the last couple of months. What is generative AI? It's artificial intelligence capable of generating text, images, videos, and other data using generative models, often in response to prompts by a human. So using these generative models, a human can talk to the generative AI model and say, please generate me a picture or some text or some video, and this generative model will create such picture, text, or video for the user. Now, what does this look like? Well, it enables humans to interact with machines with human language. For example, a user can say, show me the Oracle Redwood Shores office towers in a futuristic setting. When that's given to a Gen AI model, often referred to as a large language model, it will parse that input, understand the semantics, and generate a brand new picture that may or may not look like an Oracle Redwood Shores office tower in a futuristic setting. There's many examples of generative AI out there, and probably the most predominant are these three on these slides that you have already heard of and perhaps even used. What it allows you to do is that you can leverage generative AI to generate user outcomes in database scenarios or in database setting. For example, you can generate SQL statements for the user. So when a user says, 
what are our total streams for each Tom Hanks movie this month, you can send this to a large language model. That large language model will pass the information and generate a SQL statement for you answering the question. And because the large language model has been trained on the similar settings, it will know how to parse the different pieces of information in the text to generate the right SQL syntax for it. This brings us to the last part, Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, which is the process of expanding and revising a large language model's knowledge by providing current data on which the embedding model was not trained. So these large language models being trained on a set of data, and then when you use that language model, that's the world it knows. Often, that may not resemble the current real-time information anymore, and you can provide this current data by providing it as user input to the model. So for example, what this could look like is you have a large language model that is trained on finding schools in a district. So you build an application that allows a user to say, hey, what classes does the school offer? You send this to the application. The application knows this needs to be sent to a large language model. And the large language model in turn with your business data returns a response or SQL to the app that you can now execute. And then returns the answer, for example, the school offers biology, calculus, statistics, Spanish, and English in literature. Now, this is so powerful that it almost looks like as if you're interacting with another human throughout your application. And that's why I would like to show you a short demo of this now. Now to conclude, vectors represent features of complex unstructured data, and you can store these now in Oracle Database 23 AI. Embedding models convert input data to vectors. Again, you can leverage Oracle Database 23 AI to have vector embeddings or to execute these embedding models on your data that you have in your database. Vector search find similar data based on the distance between corresponding vectors. We have seen examples of how you can use that in SQL. Generative AI uses embedding models to generate new data with similar characteristics. So you give the model an input and it will generate your new output for it, such as your text that will generate SQL statements. And retrieval augmented generation expands the embedding model knowledge with current data. All of that is now available as part of Oracle Database 23 AI. So go check it out and see which amazing apps you can build.